Hello and welcome to my Let's Build a Titan Rooster series. Um, this episode we'll be doing a dry build of the frame and putting all the parts on there to make sure everything fits. Um, those of you who didn't suffer through the 25 minutes of me talking about all the parts I'm using, quick summary, I'm doing a build of a Armiton Rooster frame running Titan Motors, um, so Titan Rooster. Um, this is my first build series, so I'm learning as we go. Um, warning, I'm about to do a load of sorting because I'm a bit weird like that. You'll join me back when everything's ready to go. Now we've got everything uh, out to be able to build with, uh, let's start doing things. So let's do the easy part first. So I'm going to put in the section for the standoffs for all of the um, flight controller stack. Got one over here. Um, just out of view, you, I have all the screws at different sizes because they're all different heights and they all look very, very similar. Um, I mean, the great thing you get here is you do get a spare of pretty much every single type of nut and bolt that you're going to get. So I'm just going to put these on here. I mean this is just a dry fit so I'm just going to quickly throw everything together. So there we go, that's the uh, parts of the flight controller stack put in. So, so now let's move on to the arms. So the arms are put on by these plates. So this plate will go this way round inwards, so like so, like so, on the design. So um, what you need to do is you need to put these press nuts in to the holes. So you put them in, tie them up, and then you use a piece of wood, the precision tool, the hammer. You get it so it's just nice and set up, like so. You gently caress it into its hole. It does cause a little bit of delamination um, on the carbon fibre, but according to um, Armiton, that is nothing to particularly worry about. So that's what that looks like um, when you're finished. Um, yeah, it does seem to delaminate a reasonable amount. Now, Armiton say that this still is covered under your lifetime warranty, um, and this isn't load bearing in the same way as other parts, so wouldn't be concerned about it. My only thought at the moment is if these holes had a slight bevel on it, it would be easier to sit these in so when you hammer them, they actually go in easier. Um, it sort of spent a lot of time faffing about. I mean, I won't share the, the videos, going to be sped up for that bit, but it seemed a little bit more difficult. So, you do the same thing again for the uh, front piece. That's the front piece. That was a hell of a lot easier to do than the, um, the back piece. So, those are now in place. So, that's a good start. Um, one of the things that's quite nice about this is. Um, don't feel like the edges need sanding. Um, some frames are very, very sharp. They're not beveled. Um, some of the frames you can get are beveled. That isn't too sharp. So that's quite good. It means you don't cut the frame. It means I don't have to spend ages sanding them. I will be washing my hands afterwards because I'm already building up bits of carbon on my hands. Right. Now I can put the precision tool away. Let's uh, put some arms on this frame. So, 
Um, really good thing about this build is pretty much you only need to use one um, Allen key type, so that's a 2mm um, hex head bolt. So I'm just going to tighten that. Okay. So I've got a little bit of movement in my frame at the moment. Now I haven't talked everything down massively yet, um, so that's a bit odd, but um, we'll see where we go from there. So that's the back section done, and now we need to do the same with the front section. So, I can wave hello at the moment. So that's the arms now on, so we're now going to put on the aluminium parts. Now, this is meant to be a quite a tight fit, so I'm just going to line that up. Um, the suggestion is you get one of these and just make sure that it's all nicely lined up properly when you put it on. Then get your aluminium, sorry, titanium part and then. After much faffing, get one of the bolts in. Um, that was quite hard work because this is maybe a tight fit. I understand that's a tight fit, but this one went on reasonably well and then was quite hard to get screwed on. This one, if you look, still the holes will not line up. Now I've hit this with a hammer, <laughs> um, I've wiggled this, I've jiggled this, and it still won't go on. So I'm going to spend a few minutes faffing about with this and see if I can uh, make it work. Right, so it's been a while, um, and I don't want to sound disappointed, but there are some shames about the way this frame actually goes together. Um, so I've had to change a few things. So these pieces, I could not get enough torque to make them stay rigid. Um, so I've sorted them out. There are bolts in the pack, so you this is an entirely legitimate way of building this frame, but it seems strange to me that these bits here you have to hammer them they delaminate they they just don't feel quite as good um, and this front part here the torrances are tiny and I, they are I know they're intentionally tiny but I have had to basically hammer the hell out of this to actually make it go together and it now it now is together um, but that was really hard work I mean not to compare this to the chameleon bill because I really can't, they are different frames, but the chameleon build was a pleasure. Everything felt beautifully engineered and everything felt so, um, like everything meant, felt like it meant to go together. Whereas this, I have had to hammer the hell out of this just to get this in. Um, I've even had to do a little bit of sanding because there was just no way of this actually going in. I mean, I have jiggled, wiggled and done all the things that I should do to make this actually go on and it, it refused. So I've made it work, but if you are a first time builder this bit here is going to be a lot of hard work um, so anyway I'm going to carry on with the build um, but it's a shame because these seem like such a good idea but they they just don't seem to be manageable they don't work as well as these bolts do so anyway, I'm going to carry on with the build and um, we'll see where we end up next right so I've had a cup of tea and now it's time to get back onto it so I'm going to do the rear standoffs now so they are these parts here. So they have a long side and a short side and it is the long side that goes at the bottom and then you put an 8mm bolt on them to fix them in. So that would be one of these. No, that's not the right one. That's the right one. Right, so that's the rear standoffs in place, so you can see where you put your PDB. Um, next thing is to put the front brace in. So 
So that's the front uh, standoff in there. Um, I think some of the chameleons in the, um, the other versions of the chameleon actually did have one of those in there, but this doesn't. So um, this is a sort of improvement to help protect your camera. Right, so now I'm going to fit the camera. So I said it's the uh, Foxy Arrow V3. So I'm just going to do a soft fit of that to make sure it fits. Um, I think these are the screws that we are looking for. And they go in. So this is uh, using uh, one of the newer mounts, so you can use the bottom two screws. So we're going to put one of them through. So, patch your camera in. There we go. Um, I've only put the top screws in the moment, but there is a bottom screw. Uh, there we go. Um, so I'm just going to put those in. That allows you to have your adjustment. Right, so that is the camera now in. You can now adjust that as you need to. Um, obviously you can tighten that up at another point, but for today that is absolutely fine and dandy. Um, just want to do a quick check. So if I run this across the front of there, that does not touch that lens at all. That is protected. Obviously I haven't focused the camera yet, but that is quite nice. If I adjust that's fully forward, and that's fully down. Um, so that's fully down. Um, and that's still, again, completely and totally safe. So that's really good, nice bit of design there. Right, so now let's get the PDB in. And then get the flight controller out. Place that so that is facing forward. So I think one of my standoffs is um, not quite where I want it to be, uh, which makes it quite tight. So when you look at that, there, there's not a lot of room in there. So I'll probably reduce the height of the um, standoffs um, and adjust that, but later on, I can do that later on. So now I'm just going to do, do a rough fit of this black back plate. I'm not planning to use it, but I just want to just see what it looks like if I do. There you go, that's that screwed in. Um, there are some grommets and various bits and pieces in here. I'm not planning to use them, so I'm just doing this for the dry fit and just to see what it looks like. So I just want to double check this, I'm not going to leave this in here, but effectively I think this part will, the receiver can nicely fit in that section there. Let me just get these little parts to come out somewhere. That will fit nicely in that section there, probably a little bit further forward, but that gives it a nice location out of the way. Heat shrink that and get that out of the way. And so let's put the top plate on. And then finally, the top plate for the uh, GoPro mount. So that's the GoPro mount on. So I will have a proper GoPro mount on here, but I haven't got that yet, so that will be coming shortly. Right, so now I'm just going to fit the motors onto the arms, just for a test fit. So I want a clockwise motor. Um, on these uh, Titan oomphs, they actually say what they are, just about on the edge. Uh, Thank you. 
Right, so that is a sort of rough test fit of everything on there. So um, everything's kind of needs a little bit more work. But um, I've put the antenna on the back, that's well and truly out of the way of everything that's on there. Um, motors are on, I've only put one screw on them for the moment, or two screws at the moment just to get them on. And they are very nice. Um, I wanted to put a prop on, um, so this is just a standard 5 inch prop. Um, and look, you've got plenty of clearance, you've got about a centimetre. Um, and the prop level is about the same, um, about in line with this base. So that's good because it means it's out of the way of the battery. Um, I think, just comparing... I think on the oomph motors on the I have here they are slightly higher, um, so that's not bad. Um, so that's the end of this video. Um, just some sort of comments on the frame. I mean, it is a nice frame. It is very very strong. Um, and if it wasn't for these bits and the and trying to get this front section in, it's a really nice build. And the only reason I'm I'm a little bit sad by that, is that when I built the Chameleon, it was just perfect. Everything just fitted together just really nicely, and I uh, don't feel that this is a tool that should be on any quad workbench other than for um, people turning on transmitters at the wrong time. Um, so I think it's a bit of a shame. Um, I can't understand why it's done like that, but I, I, for me... The enjoyable part of the build is when everything just fits together nicely, and in this case, it just doesn't quite do it. Anyway, so uh, next video, I'll probably be doing the ESCs and the motors and getting those wired up. Um, but that's it for today. Thanks very much.